Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. We have a great show for you tonight. Uh, standing by the wings is Mr. John Cornett. How are you tonight, John? Excellent, Paul. Thank you. Great, great. Right next to me is that uh, time for hemp guy, Mr. Casper Leach. How are you, Casper? Fine. Happy Friday. And uh, we are here with a number of artifacts from uh, our friend and mentor, Jack Hare. Nice hemp case. We have some hemp news for you, and we'll be back in just a moment after we bring on our infamous dancing cannabis hemp leaves. Here they are. I feel the force. Right here in Oregon, this weekend will mark the first month of medical marijuana dispensary inspections by officials with the Oregon Medical Marijuana Dispensary Program. The Oregon Legislature formally legalized dispensaries last year. The agency hired three inspectors, according to Karen Fish, spokeswoman for the Oregon Health Authority, which oversees medical marijuana dispensaries. Inspectors in the field will make unannounced visits to the dispensaries, according to Dispensary Program Director Tom Burns. Oregon had issued licenses to 90 medical marijuana dispensaries as of last month. Burns said, quote, the regulatory structure is in place. The applications have been processed. Now enforcement begins. Dispensaries should be on notice. We'll be visiting them soon, end quote. The shops will be inspected within six months of being licensed. According to official inspectors, will visit at least once a year after that. Across the country, the New York State Senate and New York State Assembly on Friday passed a medical marijuana bill, making New York the 23rd state to create illegal access to medical marijuana for seriously ill patients. After days of tense negotiations, the bill was passed in the final hours of the legislative session on Friday. Governor Cuomo has said he will sign the bill into law. The bill will provide relief for thousands of New York patients suffering from serious and debilitating conditions such as cancer, multiple sclerosis, and epilepsy by allowing the use of medical marijuana under the supervision of their physician. Patients, caregivers, and providers watched from the gallery as the New York Senate debated and voted 49 to 10 in favor of the bill. Late last week, Governor Cuomo announced a series of last-minute changes that he wanted to the bill. The bill's sponsors, Assembly when Dick Gottfried and Senator Diane Savino worked tirelessly to accommodate the governor's concerns so that a deal could move forward. While less comprehensive than many patients fought for, the bill will allow many patients with serious illnesses or debilitating conditions legal access to medical marijuana for the first time. Patients with the following conditions will qualify for the program. Cancer, HIV, ALS, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, certain spinal cord injuries, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, epilepsy, neuropathy, and Huntington's disease. The bill allows the governor's administration the ability to add conditions, and the bill also includes a deadline of 18 months for the governor to determine whether or not to add Alzheimer's, PTSD, muscular dystrophy, and dystonia, and rheumatoid arthritis. Susan Rizinko of Auburn, who has multiple sclerosis, said, quote, Today, the New York Senate passed a medical marijuana bill that will help some patients in New York, and that's good news, but this bill they passed is far from perfect. With any medication, the decision about the best mode of administration, including smoking for some patients, should be left up to the health care providers and their patients, and this bill does not do that. We fought hard to get th this far, and we'll keep fighting to make sure that New York's medical marijuana program becomes the best in the country, in quote, this patient said. A major sticking point in the negotiations had been the issue that some patients may need to smoke medical marijuana to find immediate relief 
and many prefer to use the whole natural plant to treat their conditions. The bill passed on Friday does not allow access to the raw materials. It allows vaporization but not smoking of medical marijuana and gives the governor's administration the authority to restrict the forms of medical marijuana. The governor said on Thursday that for now, he'll only allow the sale of oils, extracts, pills, and edibles, not the raw plant, even though there is strong scientific evidence about the efficacy of smoked medical marijuana and medicine in whole plant form. Our last story tonight is from Jerusalem, Israel. The administration of oral THC mitigates symptoms of post-traumatic stress syndrome, or PTSD, according to uh, clinical trial data published online ahead of the print journal Clinical Drug Investigation. Investigators at Hebrew University Medical Center in Jerusalem assessed the safety and efficacy of oral THC as an adjunct treatment in 10 subjects with chronic PTSD. The researchers reported, quote, the intervention caused a statistically significant improvement in global symptom severity, sleep quality, frequency of nightmares, and PTSD hyperarousal symptoms, end quote. They concluded, quote, orally absorbable Delta 9 THC was safe and well tolerated by patients with chronic PTSD, end quote. Separate tr clinical trial data has previously reported that the administration of a synthetic endocannabinoid agonist can reduce the severity and frequency of nightmares in patients with PTSD. In 2013, researchers at New York University School of Medicine published findings indicating that PTSD subjects experience a decrease in their natural production of anandamide, an endogenous cannabinoid neurotransmitter. They hypothesized that an increase in the body's production of cannabinoids would likely restore the subject's natural brain chemistry and psychological balance. They affirmed, quote, our findings substantiate, at least in part, emerging evidence that plant-derived cannabinoids, such as marijuana, may possess some benefit in individuals with PTSD by help relief uh, the haunting nightmares and other symptoms of post-traumatic stress. The study, preliminary open-label pilot study of add-on oral Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol a chronic post-traumatic stress disorder will appear in the journal Clinical Drug Investigations. That's the end of our hemp news segment tonight. We're going to jump over to Mr. John Cornett. Hey, Hi, John. Paul. Hi, Howdy. Paul. Uh, I just think it's sad that we don't, uh, you know, people, some people like to juice cannabis, and it, they find that preferable over any kind of a other. Anyway, just something I just made up today. Yeah, if only there were enough leaves to juice. That's the problem. You got to have lots of leaves right. to juice it. All right.
right. Thank you. It's, uh, Mr. John Cornett. Good job, John. Hey, Casper. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Happy birthday to you, Day. Thank you. I understand you had a good friend of our show and our cause uh, serenade you with the, the birthday song today. You want to tell our audience about yeah. that? Yeah. Willie Nelson was on uh, the Celeb Stoner Show on the Time for Hemp Global Broadcasting Network, a little network that's heard all around the world. And uh, while he was uh, on the show, um, Steve Bloom happened to mention that it was my 59th birthday, called the nursing home, get me ready for Shady Pines. And uh, Willie thought it might be groovy if he sang the happy birthday song to, to Casper here. And, it made, right. made for a nice, made for a nice birthday tree. Absolutely, good present. Yeah, good present. Thank you, Willie. And he said he come, he would come on to the show sometime. All right, but I've heard that before, so I don't know. He's been on before, though. Yes, you he had has. him on your uh, I love back it. in the what about twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. I asked wild. him about the Willie biofuel too. Uh huh. What did he say? Yeah, he said he'd like to see it go national, but right now he doesn't have plans for that. He's waiting for all of the states to do what they need to do and make it possible for hemp to be grown on every farm in this country. But other than that, uh, that's okay. the only thing that's kind of holding him up. You sound a little passionate about that, guy. Sometimes when I bring that topic up, the, the passion does come forward. You know, it is almost summer solstice here. It's the 20th of June. And if you have a call or question for us tonight, you can call us at 503-288-4442. We'll be taking your calls right up to the top of the hours. And so uh, uh, we can take your calls at 503-288-4442. I have a question. Okay. What is going on with the signature drive here in this state? There are, uh, you know, two, three marijuana petitions that are going on right now. And so... Uh, uh, our initiative 21 and 22 are out there. We have decided though, given that we were just at about 50,000 signatures right now, that we do not have the wherewithal to move forward and, and qualify for the ballot. So we're just, we stopped this week, uh, our paid petition drive on 21 and 22 and, uh, uh, initiative 53 is still out there and in circulation. I understand there are over a hundred thousand signatures. And so it remains to be seen whether, uh, that one will have enough signatures to qualify. Well, do you know anything about that that might be of interest to our viewing audience that they should know about it? Um, you know, I can't really say anything at this time. I mean, you know, I know a few things about it. And so uh, uh, I'll be happy to answer any specific questions. Uh, uh, I was involved in some of the early parts of drafting it, not in the final uh, stages, but at an earlier Part of their process I was involved in that and so I can say that and uh, it's a pretty long bill it looks like it's about 38 pages good lord and uh, uh, I, I liked ours better but uh, the big multi-millionaire funders out there didn't and so uh, they backed I-53 and it remains to be seen whether we'll put anything on the ballot but time will tell but if you want to get some of those uh, volunteer petition sheets of course you can give us a call at 503-235-4606. And then the other two questions I have is, on, are you speaking at the Seattle Hemp Fest? If so, let people know about that. And two, mm -hmm. tell people about the Portland Hemp Stock so they can make it a point to put it on their calendar and be here. Okay, um, I did accept a speaking form and filled it out for the Seattle Hemp Fest. Did you do that too? I did. Okay, so... Uh, they always wait to the last minute to announce their speaking slots. So it remains to be seen when the, what the slots will be. But the Seattle Hemp Fest is at Myrtle Edwards Park on the waterfront right below the Space Needle in downtown Seattle. Uh, it is August 16th, 17th, and 18th this year, I do believe. 16th, 17th, and 18th. And so then we have our Portland Hemp Stock Festival. It's going to be at uh, Tom McCall Waterfront Park. There's a poster. We'll be there September 27th and 28th. So it uh, looks like uh, we can uh, confirm that uh, a friend of the guy who sang you, well, the son of the guy who sang you that song today, Lucas Nelson and the Promise of the Real have uh, said they're available for the show. We've also got uh, our old friend John Trudell and his band Bad Dog 
Las Marijuanos, Real One. A lot of our regular performers are coming back, so we'll be back at uh, Portland's Tom McCall Waterfront Park, not at Kelly Point, where we've been the past several years, out at the convergence of the Columbia and Willamette River, but instead at uh, uh, Waterfront Park. And for those people at home who do not know this, not only is Paul Stanford the primary reason why the Portland Hempstock is a happening event, he's also a big reason why Seattle's Hemp Fest is as successful as it is. He's one of their primary sponsors. And on behalf of the marijuana movement and Vivian McPeak and all the hardworking people there, thank you, Paul, for all the love and work that you do. Glad to do it. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Keep trying. And so, uh, but if you have a question for us tonight about ending adult marijuana prohibition, restoring industrial hemp, or helping medical marijuana patients, you can call that number there on your screen. It's 503-288-4442. You know, uh, just a couple days ago would have been our friend Jack Hare's birthday. We have a number of uh, Jack's books laid out here. Uh, right after this upcoming video, we are going to show them. Uh, let's go ahead and roll that video if we can. This is uh, uh, Jack Hare, the Emperor of Hemp. So is there a phone call? Might as well. Was that right? Yeah, it was okay. I wasn't quite Jack's transformation gained some momentum in 1973 when he satisfied a lifelong urge to write. He and a friend co-authored a little cartoon book about marijuana titled simply, Grass. Much to his surprise, Grass became an underground hit, selling about 35,000 copies. Almost overnight, Jack gained a reputation as an authority on marijuana. And now everybody thought I knew all about pot. I knew every little subtle thing. And I still didn't even know if I ran across a marijuana plant growing in a field, I wouldn't even recognize it. And the grass. And the grass. Come sit with me. And the grass. Like millions of other Americans back then, Jack knew nothing of marijuana's history and had no idea that marijuana was actually hemp, the non-intoxicating but still very much illegal variety of the ancient cannabis sativa plant. But as sales of his little grass book raised his profile, strangers began to come up to him with intriguing bits of information. They come up to me and say, Mr. Herr, do you know that they used to make paper from marijuana. Some other kid would come up to me and says, do you know that they used to make all their sales and clothes out of marijuana? The idea that it had other uses, that you could make paper out of it, that you could make cloth out of it, you could make cord out of it, you could make oil, you could make medicine. Those I had never occurred to Jack, and boy, did he take that idea and run with it. Jack was amazed to discover hemp's deep connection to mankind. For over 10,000 years, hemp was undeniably our most useful plant. Our ancestors depended on hemp's exceptionally strong fiber, cellulose-rich pulp, and highly nutritious seeds. The plant was cultivated and used throughout history for food, clothing, fuel, and medicine, as well as for sails, rope, shelter, and paper. In colonial America, hemp was not only legal, but essential to survival. Uh, Washington planted hemp at Mount Vernon in the 1790s um, while he was president in an attempt to start a home industry so that the United States would not have to depend on Italy and on Russia and on England for their hemp fiber. Um, this was just after the revolution, and the United States was trying madly not to have to rely on foreign countries for any products. Armed with this new knowledge, Jack set out to persuade the marijuana reform movement to join him aboard his new hemp bandwagon. But to his surprise, nobody got on, not even the usual suspects. 
many of us thought that Jack was uh, perhaps uh, too focused only on hemp. Uh, most of us were only focused on let's stop arresting smokers and we sort of thought the hemp issue was a secondary issue and maybe not as important and we weren't even sure there was a constituency out there that cared about it. The message, as well as the messenger, turned people off. When he first talked about hemp, to me in particular, I was very resistant because I thought of it as being just an excuse to, mar to legalize marijuana. He tended, in his enthusiasm, to overstate the case a bit. And in so doing, uh, sometimes the rest of us were embarrassed by that. We felt like it might undermine all of our credibility. He would go on and rant about, you know, hemp and how it was important and how, it could, how he found this and found that, and I paid little or no attention to him because he has a tendency to rant and rave about a lot of things, if you know him. I suspect I'm probably one of those people that refused to return Jack's phone calls. Go! There was one person who did accept Jack's ideas back then. An easygoing marijuana activist named Ed Adair could see the sense to what Jack was saying. Adair, known to everyone as Captain Ed, owned two popular Los Angeles head shops. I'd heard he sold 12 of the uh, grass books. So I went over there and introduced myself, and he looked at me and he says, I've been selling the hell out of these books. But he says, are you sure you're okay you smoke pot? Because what I walked in with was a white plastic jacket with my uh, polyester pants. I'm a California man. Jack followed Captain Ed's example and traded his polyester suits for jeans and T-shirts. The two became inseparable friends, and over the years, they collected hundreds of thousands of signatures for various legalization initiatives in California. When Captain Ed and I made a pledge, it was to work every day to legalize cannabis until we were dead, it was legal, and we turned 84. And we always felt the great injustice is that if anybody was in jail for cannabis for any reasons, it would always be too big of an injustice to walk away from and not spend almost all our time trying to change. One night in 1974, Jack experienced what he described. Jack got high, and the world changed. Next thing you know, he uh, was writing this book from circa 1979. This was his very first book. It is a cartoon book on how to grade cannabis. You can see it's uh, a little simplistic there, but you could rate cannabis on a 1 to 10 schedule. Uh, level here by uh, just following his little guideline here. Let me see. Doesn't 10 mean that you get lost in the kitchen when you go into it? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. Then right next door, in 1984, Jack moved back to Oregon, about the same time I did, and he put out this version of The Emperor Wears No Clothes. It had initially been an article in the Yippie magazine Overthrow, and so this one is actually autographed by Jack in 1989, it looks like. But this is a 1985 version. And this is the first bound copy of The Emperor Wears No Clothes. It was printed right here in Portland. And uh, I'm in the dedication there of this uh, first edition. And so this, as you can see, is oh about a third of an inch thick. Here is the 14th edition. And... Now it's gotten up to about three quarters of an inch thick. And this is the last edition that uh, came out during Jack's life, but it is still available out there. And so that is his uh, famous seminal book on hemp called uh, The Emperor Wears No Clothes. We have a number of things that are hemp here. This is hemp insulation. We have a hempcrete ball here. This is a ball of hempcrete. We have a package of hemp seeds. Very healthy, tastes good, and is it good for you? These are uh, hemp herds, the inner woody core of the marijuana plant. This is hemp fiber, the bast fiber, the outer bark that's been broken down 
into it. This is a hemp fiber mat. This is a sample of a fiber mat that uh, they use in automobile molding and things like that. And then we have hemp board. Little sample of hemp board. It's very light, very strong. And then just some raw sterilized hemp seeds or hemp grain. And so this all came through our friend with Hemp Oil Canada and her nifty new hemp fiber case. We have this hemp fiber case. Pretty nice. You can get one too and be cool. But uh, more and more things are out of coming out of hemp. We have, of course, a little sample of Dr. Bronner's hemp soap. There's that. Okay. We understand we've had some phone calls standing by. Let's go ahead and uh, take those phone calls. Welcome to the show, caller. Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Awesome. Um, I have a quick question about marijuana legalization in, in Oregon. Go right ahead. Um, well, first off, what do you think the on the next bill, what do you think the chances of um, like marijuana actually being legalized um, it, it's a big, I'm actually a caregiver uh, here in Portland, and uh, it's a really, it's a, it's a huge issue to me, mostly because of my income. Uh -huh. uh, I, I think wanted, if it I makes wanted... the ballot, it will probably pass. Uh, our initiative 21 and 22, we don't think we have enough signatures to make the ballot. There's another one out there, initiative 53, that got the backing of the big billionaires, George Soros and the estate of the late Peter Lewis. and. Uh, uh, they might make the ballot. They're uh, uh, within striking distance, and we'll find out sometime in the coming month. Fucking bitch. What? Fuck. Okay, that was brilliant. Uh, do we have another phone call? Let's go ahead and see if we can take that phone call. Welcome to the show, caller. Hello, caller. Paul? Yes. That was my dog being upset if you could hear him about what just happened. We just heard. Yeah, you, what do you do? Some people are, are uh, childish. Well, I'm really sorry to hear about that and all your great efforts. You and Casper there. Thank you. I want to thank you all. This is Kim, by the way. And um, for all Hi. you've done, um, at least I can still turn in my petitions that I've got. Yeah, you but can. Thank we you very much for everything. Turn them in. Uh, we just decided this week that uh, uh, it was just statistically impossible for us to get another 100,000 signatures in the next two weeks. Well, and you so, know what you're doing, and um, I'm behind you all the way from now on. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. We will continue day, the bye. fight. Uh, if this uh, doesn't uh, make the ballot and pass, we'll be back with a much uh, better proposal for 2016. You can count on it. Thanks for your phone call. If you have a question or comment for us tonight, give us a call at 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. We have a studio audience member here. Let's see if we can get that microphone up and welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Howdy. I have a question about I-53. Uh-huh. I don't know anything about the way that law is, the way it's written, the way it's structured. And the one thing that I'm always the most interested in is how much control and power do individuals get to maintain if that were to pass? In other words, can everybody grow their own? If they can, how much? You know. I think it's, it's four or six plants under I-53. Four plants. You can have four plants. Uh, you can have, uh, uh, I, I can't speak to a lot of the specifics. I'm gonna have to study a little bit more before I can give you a lot of the details. But uh, that's where it's at, you know, we have a little uh, clip we're going to run now. Uh, uh, let's, is that clip ready? Let's go ahead and run it. We'll be right back. Here it comes. Man is a hero and an icon and uh, a trailblazer, a pioneer. He's the author of the book. The emperor wears no clothes. Really, if you think about it, he's one of the founding fathers of the modern cannabis re-legalization movement. And I want you to put your hands together and show your love. You coming around this way? For the one and only Jack Herrer, everybody. 
Jack Hammer. Some of these people know me from 1984. I came up here to uh, Oregon and, and Washington. We bid an initiative over and over and over and over and over again. We bought a store, we put on the store over and over and over again, and we put on the ballot, and we bought in 1980, 98, we passed the initiative, we went out and got the fucking signatures, and we passed the initiative. Now I will tell you, we sold that with once a little bit of rain will fall, but it's okay because we got it for medicine. We, in the year before that, we bought it for medicine in California, in Dennis Perone and me, when down there we got 750,000 signatures and we pass it on the ballot for medicine and we got it all over the fucking state except for red -lit areas like San Diego. <laughs> uh, 14 years after we passed the law it's still going up. I'm going to tell you, there's nothing fucking better for the human race than having marijuana morning, noon, and night. Yeah! You have two years longer than people that don't smoke and don't drink, and eight to 24 years longer than people that do. You gotta be out of your mind not to smoke dope. Yeah. <laughs> Once you know this, not even two years longer if you smoke it, if you eat the seed out of three million seeds and food stuff on Earth. The number one thing in the whole world is hemp for one to a hundred before you get to soybeans. One to a hundred. The first, second, third, fiftieth, ninetieth, a hundred things of everything on earth. And the number one thing to a hundred is hemp seed. And that's against the law. We didn't know it in public school, high school, or college. I didn't know that 98% of all the, the food and clothing of the whole world was hemp. And it was the best thing the world has ever had. I don't want to fucking rid the United States government one fucking dollar of taxes. I thought they could show a fucking jail for getting you and me and 20 million people getting arrested for pot is the safest thing you can do in the universe. And that is what we're going to do in California. Okay? Come over to my boat. Come over there. And uh, I will see you next time. Let's give it up for Jack Herrera, everybody. Okay, that is Jack's very last speech. Uh, he'd had a massive stroke about eight years before that, and it took him years to regain a lot of his 
powers of speech, but he came and gave that talk uh, at our Portland Hempstock Festival in Kelly Point Park about uh, five years ago. And about five minutes after that, he had another massive stroke and a heart attack and passed away. Never regained his powers of speech after that. He passed away on tax day, April 15th, the following year. So uh, uh, that is the story with that. But we were just talking about how, you know, you could see in that video, the emperor of hemp, he, his powers of speech were, were formidable. And uh, the stroke really had cut those back, but, but he regained some of them, as you could tell in that final speech he made. You said it was painful to watch. It was. It was because I, I knew Jack's, when he was giving his uh, speeches in the early 90s, uh -huh. and uh, I remember Jack coming into the store I was working at to hire me, and before he hired me to work for his office, he would talk to me about hemp, and I remember the passion he had when he was educating me about it's more than marijuana, it's hemp, and there's a difference, paper, fiber, fuel, and living longer, and the people who smoke and don't smoke, and how it works with the... You touched on a lot of those points here. Oh, I tell you, and uh, I just remember by route, I could hear Jack actually talking in the back of my head from those times, and uh, I know how much uh, he enjoyed being an ambassador for the hemp message and how uh, painful it was even for him to have to deal with the process of learning to deal with the English language again and course, communicate again. And we were all very happy to see that he could come back that far, but. Yep, well, you know what? We have another little difficult. clip that we're gonna run right now. Uh, this is the one I thought we were gonna run this time, but uh, you and I will, will stay on, on the camera here. Go right ahead. Here. Um, so one last special request. It's Casper's 59th birthday today. Any chance you could sing them a verse of happy birthday? Yeah, to who? Casper. Casper, who is my partner here on the show. Hi, Willie. And, uh, yeah, it's hey, my... Casper. Happy birthday. How old are you? I'm Don't 50... kill me. Don't kill me. I'm 59 years old today. and uh... All right. Ain't nothing to it, huh? No. <laughs> I tell you, I feel every year of it. <laughs> well, let's, let's sing happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Casper. Happy birthday to you. Oh, Willie, that rocks. That, wow. Thank you, Willie, so very, very Willie, much. You, Will, you made Casper's day. You he made did. my day. And thank you so much for taking time for him to be on the Celeb Stoner Show. And we'll uh, catch you on the road. Thank you so much. All right. All right. There, we thought you'd bask in that love there. Very much so. Very much so. It's all nice right. to be appreciated for all the hard work I do at time for So him. we have some phone calls that have been standing by. Let's go ahead and uh, take a couple of those phone calls. Welcome to the show, caller. Me? Yeah, hello, caller. Hey, hi. Um, I have a friend here from China who wants to ask a couple questions about um, uh, about how I can get, how he can get his medical marijuana card in Oregon. Okay. Okay, well, I'm going to pass the phone to him. One sec. Oh, ni hao. Ni hao. Ni hao, ni hao ma. Uh, Wosh hun hao. Okay. That's, uh, I don't know. They just asked, how are, hello and how are you? Whole thing. I said, walk home. We, are, I am good. Oh, I said nothing at all. Just made sounds. Let's try another phone call. <laughs> hello, caller. Welcome to the show. Hi, I don't know if I, it's me. Am I on there yet? Hi, Paul. It's you. Maureen. Howdy. Hi. Hey, I just wanted to say happy birthday to you for next Thursday. Hey. Well, thank you. Happy, thank happy you. Happy birthday to you two, both of you. And thank I know you. yours next Thursday, Paul. So we're all facing birthdays right now. So That's hey, what happens when you're lucky. You guys. Uh, um, I didn't hear you because I'm talking and I'm echoing here. Uh, also, I feel really bad about the petition. I'm really sorry to hear that. You know? Yeah, it's a little disappointing, but, you know, life goes on. Uh, we'll be back bigger, better, stronger in uh, the next round. Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, next time we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> so, yep, anyway, we'll see what happens night. with I-53. You 
watching this show and glad for everything you do. So thanks. And have a great birthday, both of you. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, you have a good evening. Thanks for calling. They say that old age is a gift not given to everyone, so those who receive it should enjoy it. Indeed, indeed. So uh, uh, we're, we're not over the hill yet, though. Or maybe we are. I no. mean, yeah, you're right. We're not. Yeah, we're not. Okay. So, again, if you have a question for us tonight, it is June 20th. You can call us at 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. One of the uh, callers, they said a Chinese person was going to ask uh, uh, how you get a medical marijuana card. Well, there are a number of ways. You need to go to your doctor if you're in one of the states that allows medical marijuana and uh, ask them if they can help you get your medical marijuana card. If your doctor won't do it or you don't want to ask your doctor because you don't want it in your permanent medical file, then we have a completely uh, private service that uh, allows you to meet with a doctor and get a medical marijuana recommendation. You can uh, get it for any of those conditions there on your screen. Just call that number from anywhere in the United States. It's 1-800-723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. If you're here in the Portland area, you can call us directly at 503-281-5100. That's 503-281-5100. And, uh, uh, we'll be happy to help you get that for, for any of those conditions, from chronic pain, cancer, and AIDS, to gastrointestinal ailments and neurodegenerative diseases. So uh, just give us a call. We'll be happy to help. So, Casper, your radio programs are going forward. Uh, how, do you have new hosts this week? We do have new hosts coming up uh, this month. Um, one thing that uh, people need to know is that we're expanding our vocabulary and our language at the end of the month. We're going to be introducing to the uh, Time for Hemp global audience Japanese programming every Monday and Wednesday, an hour in the morning, 9, see, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard, which is 4 p.m. Japanese time. So that program can be part of the 420 hour Monday and Wednesday in Japan, so that's exciting. And uh, Ben Swan has had so much fun uh, being part of our broadcast. Ben, Why don't you tell our audience who Ben Swan is? Ben He's Swan a... has won two um, Edward R. Murrow Awards for his reporting and journalistic abilities, and he's also won an Emmy for as such, and he's been doing vignettes like um, a Paul Harvey Good Day used to do little five-minute things that we put in the middle of a uh, two-hour music broadcast. And he's going to expand his program to a full two hours in the afternoon as well. Kevin Zeese has come on board. He's one of the co-founders of the Drug Policy Alliance and the Drug Policy Foundation, I believe. And uh, Joe Grimbine's going to be bringing his programming to the network in the next, next couple of weeks as well. And uh, we've gotten... Um, Doug McVeigh, who's joined our team these past couple of weeks, is doing a morning program. So we are expanding left and right. we got other hosts waiting in the wings as soon as we can hire the staff to make that possible. And we're hoping that's going to happen soon as well. And uh, so it's been a lot of fun, to say the least. All right. It, it's keeping you busy. It that's is. And thing. Sasha, too. Sasha Goldman, who's my uh, partner in this. I couldn't do it without him. He runs the websites. He also handles the board op for about half the programming on the network. And I can certainly tell you, if I didn't have a good partner like that, we would not have a good team and a good network as we do. So, All right. Well, you know, we've touched on uh, Jack Hare a number of times. And... Uh, uh, we have produced a little music video from our old associate's uh, song. Tim Pate wrote a song called Come Climb the Mountain with Me. And uh, he, uh, our friend Ico, has put together a nice video tribute to Jack Harris. So we're going to run that right now, and we'll be back in a moment. Mr. Henry Ford in 1941 with Popular Mechanics magazine showing off his car made from hemp. <laughs> well, come climb the mountain with me. Come see what we can see. Come climb the mountain with me, and then we will all be free. The 
Some men are born to lead, some men have destiny, but some men plant the seed, and some men set it free. Here we have 92,000 cars a day, thousands of people parking behind the FBI building, and uh, they arrested us, and they said, you have to, you cannot do this. I said, well, I'm not going to pay you a fine and go on uh, probation. So I did 15 days in prison rather than give him a $5 fine. Wow. You that's, know, we had that's, to, kind of, that's, that's kind of like telling Jesus, <laughs> Jesus you can't practice on Sunday. <laughs> it was a fine line. So come climb the mountain with me. Come see what we can see. Come climb the mountain with me. And then we will all be free. Jack here. And headed there. Well, hi, guys. They're on, they must be on the, on the hemp tour. tour. Are you on the hemp tour? One on man the hemp tour. We yeah. must We've hear. Got One man's voice was clear. One man heard the call. His vision speaks for all. The number one plant for paper, fiber, and fuel from the natural cycle had been outlawed, that somehow the synthetic cycle had won, when the number one thing in the natural cycle could outproduce it and completely clean up the atmosphere. So my partner, Captain Ed, who had become my partner in 1973 in doing the politics of this, said, we have to, we have to teach everybody in the world. So we went around and told everybody. <laughs> yeah. But it was a slow process. So come open your eyes with me and come see what you can see it's time for the world to know the emperor wears no clothes come open your eyes with me it's time for you to see it's time for the world to know the emperor wears no clothes it's time for the world to know the emperor wears no clothes the emperor wears no clothes the emperor wears no clothes. The emperor wears no clothes. All right. There's a little tribute to Jack. Thanks to Ico for putting that together. And thanks to Tim Pate for the music. And uh, Ico does amazing work. Jack Hare yeah. and uh, Captain Ed for making that happen. Helping lead the way. I. Uh, I knew those guys, as did you. But uh, we are closing up. Have we you noticed that we are watching more and more memories of people who have passed and less and less that's of people what, who are with us? That's what happens when you get old. Wow. And, you know, that's what happens. You know, uh, um, so it goes. You know. But if you have a question or comment for us tonight, you can call us at that number there on your screen. It's 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. We're down to, we might get another phone call in there, but we might not. That's okay. We have our archives from the Time for Hemp shows uh -huh. up. And, and people, we had a couple of the clips from those absolute, archives in that video. But they've been missing there. for a while because of In case those people didn't recognize the guy with the glasses and the hair, <laughs> 20 years younger, it's this guy next to me. And it's, uh, but when American those, Freedom uh, Radio went down and under, uh, the radio archives disappeared. We had five years of shows that uh, we were able to present to the public for their research. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sasha has unearthed them and gotten them back up with the help All of right. Eric here in the studio. And uh, we've gotten all five years now of, this, of the uh, archives back up. And it is, it is not true. I did not interview Jesus. I, have, I don't go that far back, you know, asking him how he and his father made the plant to begin with. But uh, there are a lot of old clips back there to be found. And a lot yeah, of, you had Timothy Leary in there. Tim and Leary. name some of your other guests. Yeah, uh, Tim Leary. And we had Carl, uh, uh, Elvi Maseka, who's been one of the uh, recipients of the government uh, marijuana uh, uh, grown pot. We've got M Michelle Rainey, who's no longer with us. Of course, Gatewood Galbraith is no longer with us. And of course, Jack Hare, who's no longer with us. And there's a lot of people who are no longer with us. Uh, that are in those archives. That are in those your archives. Your, uh, and a lot of people who are, like Keith Strop, you can be found, you can found in there. And of course, uh, Steve Hager from High Times Magazine. And you are in there. And, and Chris that. Conrad, one of the founders of the movement. And Dennis Perone. You can find Dennis Perone in there. And Dr. Todd Micaria. Uh, is found in there as well. So, and I think what you'll find most of all is a lot of love when you get into the archives. Um, if you are uh, interested, our, uh, we've got some good news to share. Just this week, our uh, Facebook page topped a half a million likes a couple Yay! of days ago. 
So uh, if you want to find out more about that, you can go to facebook.com slash restore hemp. That's facebook.com slash restore hemp. Uh, we're a little bit over 500,000 people who are following our daily posts of news and memes. Uh, and we have a telephone caller standing by now, maybe the last caller on the show. Welcome to the show, caller. Howdy. Hey, I just want to tell you guys, keep up your work. Doing good. We shall. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, little encouragement. We'll keep it up. So uh, we will be back next week on the 27th of June with another live show. But uh, uh, we'll have a tape show on the 4th of July. The studio will be closed that whole week. So you can stay tuned. Uh, the deadline for gathering signatures is July 3rd. All the signatures should be turned in by July 2nd because they have to be turned in to the Secretary of State's office by their prospective campaigns by uh, 5 p.m. on Thursday, July the 3rd. So uh, uh, that is the timeline on that. And so we've got John Cornette standing by in the wings waiting to bring us some music, but we've got a few more minutes before that. Well, it has been an exciting 59 years to be along. There's only a few things that I've been embarrassed uh -huh. by, like the things I did for a Klondike bar. But, but I, I understand things you're, you're trying done. to get back to your original weight. Six pounds, five ounces? Yeah, that's, that's going to be hard. <laughs> that's going to be hard. Hey, look, there's, there's, uh, oh my God, I got there's hair. Uh, some guy silhouette there. Wow. You once had hair. Once had hair, and I was just as high then as I am now. I understand. That's not changed. I see. That, that explains it all. <laughs> yeah, I had a mullet. I was one of those people. I had a mullet. <laughs> okay. That was one of the things we I did for a Klondike you. bar, you know. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, I don't. I don't know that I've tried a Klondike bar. Oh bar. my God! What would you? You don't know what you do for a Klondike bar? Oh my God! They're awesome. Okay. I, right. I guess, anyway, now I'll make it a point to let people know to go to timeforhemp.com. Check out our host. We have about 35 hosts on there. The hostess if, with the really, most. And if you don't like me, I can understand that. But you're bound to like all the other hosts on the network. Very informative. Lots of groovy music. I'm trying to bring that word back desperately. It's a cool, cool, really cool word. A lot of great hosts, a lot of good information. Groovy. And if you go to the frontofspreaker.com, they now groovy. feature Time for Hemp as one of their best broadcasts. So that's kind of cool. So we're making headways. we got almost 30,000 people following us on Twitter now. That rocks. And the reason why is because of people like Chris Conrad has a show on there. Al Graham has a show on You're there. You're a tweeter. Yeah, well, uh, Jay Nair is a good tweeter as well. She's part of our team. She's, she's good. And then we got great Hi, joint Jay. host like Paul Stanford is one of our joint hosts on the broadcast. And so you can go to Time for Hemp to find out more about that. Please do. You can come to uh, That's the number our four. website at hemp.org. That's a portal to all of our websites, hemp.org. Uh, it will take you to our clinic site at thc-foundation.org or to our museum or our television show. But uh, we want to thank you folks for watching. We've got a few more minutes. We'll uh, turn it. Do you think you can play for three minutes, John? I've got a special one. Just for Casper, I could probably uh, drag out for about three minutes. Well, All groovy. Right. <laughs> we'll tune in next week, folks. And uh, we'll be back and help us restore him. Huh. Good night.